Good evening, I'm Ken Matz. And I'm Barbara Sloan. We're bringing you the special report live. In the background, uh, you'll soon be seeing the Royal Yacht Britannia. That's where Queen Elizabeth II is right now. It's the start of a busy evening following a busy afternoon. She arrived by Concord at Miami International at 2. From there, it was on to Booker T. Washington Middle School. But Her Majesty must keep moving. Next stop, the sky up. From there, a barge out to the Britannia. Action News reporter Dave Game is uh, at the Port of Miami, a little bit closer to the Britannia than we are right now. And uh, Dave, have you seen the comings and goings from the royal vessel? Uh, yeah, actually I have. I, you, you caught me as I was looking at the comings and goings of the royal gowns coming to the vessel. I'll tell you, there are a lot of interesting, wealthy people coming on to visit the Queen tonight, to dine with her, to talk with her, just the chance to soak up a little bit of royal ambiance. Ambiance, which started when the Queen made her way to the royal yacht this afternoon. The weather was just like home for this British sailor who couldn't let a little rain stop him from guarding his queen aboard the royal yacht. Presidents travel by motorcade. Royalty travels by royal barge. The queen making her stately way yachtward this afternoon. More common boats trailing in her wake. Her royal navy spending a few dollars on gunpowder, giving her a 21 cannon salute as she came aboard. After all that, she needed to rest up for tonight's gallop. And as guests started to arrive tonight, it was just like a page out of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Is that former President Gerald Ford and his wife Betty headed up the gangway? And who designed the gown Nancy Reagan wore to dine with the Queen, joined by yet another former president we all remember? Black ties by the dozen, sequins by the hundreds, as a hand-picked crowd of movers and shakers in Miami arrived by limousine to break bread on the Britannia. Among them, Miami Mayor Xavier Suarez. What does the mayor expect to talk about at dinner? Someone uh, asked the queen about Cuba during their visit to Vizcaya, you know, about the liberation of Cuba, and she says, oh, we, we support that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, some of the people here tonight would introduce that topic. Thank you, Dave, for that report. Incidentally, uh, John Hambrick and Giselle Fernandez were anticipated to anchor this program, but given the weather of today and some loose electronic connections, we're going to fill in at least for the moment. You may be wondering how the Queen's guests know the party when the party is over. The Royal Marine Band will beat a retreat, and that is scheduled for 10.30. And, of course, it has been quite a day for the Queen and her entourage. It began uh, early this afternoon here in Miami. Of course, the first of the day uh, started in Washington, D.C. Once she arrived in Miami, it was on to Booker T. Washington Middle School for quite a presentation. Let's take a look at what the Queen saw today at that school. In the afternoon, the Queen takes her seat in the school auditorium. Let the show begin. Miami. Local students in a local production about Miami's history, its natural resources, its unique ethnic makeup. Castro took our island home. We were exiles and refugees. And we found a home in the USA, in a city by the sea. Miami opened up her arms, and the people changed her face. We all drink cafe Cito now, it's sure a different place, oh, in Miami, in 1962, Miami, the world I was you. Who was the first to stand after the performance? You guessed it. The cast then had a brief audience with the Queen, a smashing time. Then flanked by dignitaries, time to walk outside to more applause. And more music, courtesy of the Booker T. Washington Tornado Band. Some of it traditional. Some of it up-tempo.
applause from the monarch, a moment none of those students will lightly forget. And, of course, that was a report by Giselle Fernandez. Barbara, there were no marching bands and no historical sketches at the Queen's second stop, but they really weren't needed. Not when you have the beauty of Vizcaya as your backdrop. Now, John Hambrick has a report on the place where Miami's past and present always seem to come together in some kind of majestic sort of way. Anticipation, the restlessness of waiting for the point of history to arrive. Finally, the big moment. Miami may have welcomed the queen, but Mother Nature didn't. Fortunately, Her Majesty had her umbrella, with Miami Mayor Xavier Suarez by her side. Meeting and greeting were on the menu, taking in all the chatting and curtsying, taking in the splendor of Vizcaya. Now, the question many of you may be asking, what exactly does it feel like meeting the queen? She was, well, she said hello, and I said hello back, and I curtsied. And, and then now she was leaving on her boat, I curtsied again. She shaked my hand, and she, she said that I was handsome. She was great, with her hat on and her dress. She didn't say anything, she just, I had a bow. <laughs> and call her um, Your Majesty. And tonight's activities for Her Majesty. Right now, she's entertaining 40 guests at a formal dinner. At 9.30, 200 more guests arrive for a black tie gala. And at midnight, that's when the yacht, the Britannia, departs for some royal R&R &R in the Keys. Quite a big day for everybody involved. You bet. Coming up, Her Majesty's in Miami, but what about the rest of the royals? Charles and I, Fergie and Andy, we're going to dish a little royal dirt. But first, try your hand at trivia, fit for a queen. Why is Her Majesty in Miami? Because she's never been. That, according to the British Council. Do not adjust your television. Adjust your radios to the all-new Mix 105.9 FM. 50 minutes of music an hour. Let's just wait it. This is a Chevy Mayday. May is build-out month. The more we sell, the more we get. We'll make your down payment up to $1,500. Or finance as low as 1.9%. Leave your money home. Geo storms are just $189 per month with no money down. Go to a South Florida Chevy Geo dealer by May 31st. But leave your money home. S10 pickups are just $169 per month with no money down. Buckle up, Beverly Hills. Look who's coming to town. It's Eddie Murphy. Hey! Making friends. Influencing people. Say, ow! Ow! And taking care of some police business, Eddie style. This is still a work in this thing! He's strictly all work and no play. Stole in this house. How do you steal a house? So look out for a cop with class. How long would it take to shave those legs anyway? At a special time Saturday, the box office blockbuster, Beverly Hills Cop 2. You busted. Compare fresh and natural premium orange juice just a dollar ninety nine. Limits do apply. You probably know that Queen Elizabeth II is a Windsor, a clan that has held the British throne since the turn of the century. But did you know they don't come from Windsor? They hail from Germany. That's the past, the future of the Windsors, as is, is as British as fish and chips. At the root of today's Windsors is the Queen Mum. Her two children are princesses, Margaret and, of course, Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen's children are known for giving Fleet Street something to sell papers with. There's Charles, who's married to Lady Diana Spencer. There's Anne, married to Captain Mark Phillips. There's Andrew and his wife, Sarah Ferguson. And the fourth child is Prince Edward. He's the remaining royal bachelor. Then there's the next generation, including the royal grandchild, who will be king. Prince William and his brother, Harry, Peter, and Zara Phillips and Beatrice and Eugenie.
Of course, they're too young to steam up the scandal sheets, but it's no problem for their parents. That was Giselle Fernandez reporting. And it was no problem at all, of course. Being a member of the royal family sure does have its advantages. But it's not all peaches and cream, or in this case, tea and crumpets. John Hambrick says, just think of how it would be to be followed and photographed everywhere you go, to have your fashions and your passions all made public. Behind all the pageantry, beneath the protocol for the royal family, they're just people. People with drives, ambitions, problems, private sides that the public is all too anxious to learn about and all too anxious to scrutinize. When Prince Charles played polo in Palm Beach, what got all the attention? His polo trousers and boots. Royal attire has fueled many scandals through the years. Remember the Princess of Wales in her strapless evening gown? Or the Duchess of York, often criticized for showing too much knee, too much leg, and too much hip. When the wind blew her short shirt during a stop in Australia, the tabloids had a field day. But that's nothing new for the woman many call Fergie. Ever since her marriage five years ago to Prince Andrew, once known in the tabloids as Randy Andy, the Duchess has been accused of using her royal position to promote her books, of leaving her first child at home while off on a ski jaunt, of holding dinner parties and taking golf trips while British troops risk their lives in the Gulf. But at least Fergie's marriage has lasted. This outing by Charles and Di was one of the few times they'd been photographed together in recent years. Princess Anne made headlines in 1989 when she split from her husband. The princess also caused a royal rage when she described the AIDS crisis as a self-inflicted wound. Then there are Prince Charles' dangerous diversions. Some have gone so far as to say he has a death wish. In 1988, an avalanche killed the prince's skiing partner. In 1990, he was hurt in a polo accident, but the games go on. And so does the royal bashing. In an age of high unemployment, high taxes, and no promise of a better future, many young Brits still embrace the politics of punk rock and still cling to the words sung nearly 15 years ago by Britain's Sex Pistols. Well, we don't know if the Queen has even heard Doubt that it. particular yeah. song or if her family even reads the tabloids, but we know those papers wouldn't keep writing about the royal family if the public didn't enjoy reading about it. And the public here loves to hear about mm. what's going on with the royal family, of course. The Queen is in Miami. This is an historic time for us. John Hamrick and Giselle Fernandez are stationed at the Port of Miami. No, Near. we're not at the Port we're of Miami. Park, Park, Park. Sorry about We've that. We've got quite an audience all around us right now. In fact, we, we don't know if they're looking at the uh, at the Britannia across uh, from us or whether or they're us. just uh, <laughs> wondering what's going on here with us. We have had some technical difficulties, as uh, Ken mentioned a while ago, and we're going to try to continue our program as planned from this point out. Giselle. It's been a beautiful night here. As you can see, let me give you a live shot behind me. There it is, the yacht, Royal Yacht Britannia. That's where the... Queen Elizabeth II is right now preparing for her big party with her 40 guests. Absolutely a lovely day. The wind is not uh, too much. It's pretty calm out here. Again, a lovely day in Miami for the Queen. Let's uh, turn now to some of the smut we've been wanting to hear about, see what the tabloids like to write about. Joining us now with a special perspective on the royal family and her royal visit is Quentin Letts. He is a writer for London's Daily Telegraph newspaper. We thank you for joining us on this lovely evening, Mr. Letts. Good evening. Good evening. Can you first tell me, is this the Queen's Cup of Tea, Miami? Oh, Miami is very much the Queen's Cup of Tea. It's a very beautiful place, and as the British Consul said, she's never been here before, so that's why she's come. And what do you think will most impress her? I think the skyline this evening would impress her. It's a very beautiful sight. But also, uh, I know she was impressed this afternoon to meet the children of the Booker T. Washington School. I know that she's fond of theatre. Would she have liked the production that was aired for her today? I'm sure it will have tickled her greatly, and, and also Prince Philip. He was on notice, noticeably good form, but they had just been on Concord, and he's a great flyer, so perhaps that was the reason why, too. You know, you mentioned Prince Philip. We often are talking so much about the Queen. Does he mind ever being in the shadow, so to speak, of her limelight? Well, I'm, he's been in, in, in the shadow, if you like to call it, for so long, I don't get matters anymore. But he, he obviously uh, realizes that the Queen is head of state and uh, that when, when there are some steps put in front of them, then she must go down first. Uh, I don't think it's a problem for him. What about the break in protocol this week uh, before Congress? Now, I understand that the tab in the tabloids in London that read EGAD, you know, with a hug. Yeah. 
Why was that so scandalous? That was not so, not so, not so much scandalous as surprising. Mrs. Alice Frazier, 67, a 15 stone mama and a, a grand, grandmother of 15 or countless children, she just leapt forward and embraced the Queen. It was, a, it was a spontaneous gesture, but Mrs. Frazier perhaps didn't know that protocol forbids that people do such things. One normally only shakes the hand, the hand of the Queen and only when invited, but she didn't pay any attention to that. She said, this is the American way, and well, the Queen put up with it, and, and I think was actually quite pleased, but although she'd, fr she'd froze at first. Well, she seemed very warm, though, about it. She handled it quite well, as did Mrs. Bush. She did, and Mrs. Bush loved it, too. Yeah. I'm sure. Now, what about uh, what we all like to hear so much about uh, Charles and Diane, their ever-going feud or romance or whatever it is these days? What is it these days? Well, the, the, the tabloid newspapers, are, uh, uh, my newspaper is not a tabloid, I hasten to add, but the, <laughs> the tabloid newspapers do uh, enjoy covering this particular aspect of royal life. And, and I think it can best be phrased as speculation, although there are certain tidbits leaked by, by palace moulds which suggest that there's some fact to it. But um, it's great copy. Uh, everyone loves reading about it. It's a bit like Kitty Kelly's book about Nancy Reagan. How much is true? Who knows? But it makes, a, makes for a good read. It does. It's so fun to hear about. Listen, thank you so much for joining us, Not Quentin. Let's, we thank you. Johnny? Thank you. Do you have that regal bearing, maybe a noble nose? I think you do. Well, stick around. We have Queen Elizabeth II. That's T-O-O. Take another stab at Queen Trivia. What is Queen Elizabeth II called for short? The Sov for the Sovereign. Up now there's a whole new kind of fried chicken. New light and crispy from KFC. Introducing light and crispy from KFC. No skin, so it's light. All taste because it's marinated through and through with 11 herbs and spices. They were the hottest teen heartthrobs the world has ever seen. Ed Cookie Burns of 77 Sunset Strip, Tommy Sands, Bobby V, Eddie Fisher, and Connie Stevens. Why'd you marry him? I don't believe we're talking about this right now. <laughs> I didn't think anything could break Elizabeth and myself up. And the real Dr. Ben Casey, Vince Edwards. My mother for a while, everybody in the neighborhood in Brooklyn thought, you know, her son was yeah. a doctor. Teen Heartthrobs from San Francisco, next Geraldo. Monday at 5 on Channel 6. At Channel 6, if you want to sit here, you can't just sit around. We can tell you this. That That's why Ken Match is earning a reputation for going to the scene, getting personally involved, and tackling sensitive issues. So what is the immediate answer? If we expected anything less, he wouldn't sit still for it. Good evening, I'm Ken Match. Ken Match on Channel 6 Action News. We're earning our reputation, one story at a time. When you're earning a reputation for stories about children and the issues that affect them, you get involved, you get emotional, and once in a while, you even get a hug. Channel 6 anchor Barbara Sloan doesn't just talk about kids, she talks with them. At Channel 6 Action News, we're earning our reputation, one story at a time. Welcome back to our special report. I'm Giselle Fernandez. We're here at Bayfront Park on the dock across from the Royal Yacht Britannia where the Queen is entertaining, having a big party over there at this point. And on a beautiful night, we might add, imagine to be Queen for a day. Some people dream about it. Yeah, but uh, uh, boop. for some <laughs> folks here in South Florida, the Miami Herald had a contest that made that dream come true. <laughs> Jessica Geary has our report on that. <laughs> Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II and her noble sisters arrived in Miami. Wait a minute, the Queen doesn't have that many sisters, and they certainly don't sport mustaches or drag cardboard dogs. Lest you forget your royal etiquette, may I remind you the Queen may never be asked a question directly. South Florida royal watchers got to hobnob with the paparazzi as more than 20 monarch wannabes put their best slippers forward to win the Queen Elizabeth II lookalike contest. The title didn't come easy, however. First contestants had to hedge questions about etiquette and what to do with unsavory colonists from the states. There are no high-ranking officials in Kentucky.
After much consultation and talk of noble noses and regal bearing, the judges finally picked a successor. And the most spectacular prize winner of all time is number one, Judith Kindy. Judith Gindy, who strolled off with the crown and the title, says she's used to being compared to Her Majesty. I feel like I have an affinity to the Queen. Uh, uh, the one person I would love to meet of all of them is the Queen. British columnist Patricia Cowager was so impressed with Gindy, she automatically fell to her knees. I have been told for many, many years that I have a tremendous resemblance to the Queen. And when she was younger and I was younger, our profile was just about exactly alike. Still, not everyone agreed with the choice. I shared tea and tartlets with some contestants who were convinced they had the blue blood necessary to be her eminence. Well, I was told a number of times that I look like her. I resemble Queen Elizabeth, and I admire her, and I thought it would be an honor to be in the contest and a lot of fun. And, well, we shared the same interest in horseback riding, loving dogs, being very close to our families. I um, was told I have her royal nose. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't be mistaken, Judith Gindy isn't just queen for a day. Her Majesty Lookalike will soon be jetting off for a royal tour of England. What a bad prize for an afternoon of tea and crumpets. Maybe I should have joined the contest. After all, I do know how to do the royal wave, and I have on occasion been called a queen. Jessica Aguirre, Channel 6, Action News. As have we all, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> or a princess. More on Her Majesty in Miami in just a few minutes. But first, it's your last chance to put on your thinking crowns and answer this Queen trivia question. What does Her Majesty's famous pocketbook contain? Only mints for her horses, no cash. Honey, what kind of dressing on your salad? Oh, uh... How about blue cheese? Oh, what? We're not doing that fat-free thing anymore? Yeah, we are. It's a new craft-free flavor. Uh, fat-free, cholesterol-free. Uh-huh. What's that going to taste like? Mmm, blue cheese. New craft-free blue cheese flavor non-fat dressing. Fat-free, cholesterol-free. But feel free to love the taste. So what's the bottom line here, honey? Delicious. <laughs> I thought a sunscreen was all I needed but I was getting only one kind of protection. To help prevent that sun-dried look, my skin needs moisturizing too. Now I use Vaseline Intensive Care Moisturizing Sunscreen Lotion. Not only has an advanced sunscreen formula, it also has clinically proven moisturizers to keep my skin smooth and healthy looking. So if you're getting only one kind of protection, think twice. Vaseline Intensive Care Moisturizing Sunscreen Lotions. Sun care with twice the care. Subspace transmission. Starship Enterprise. Picard, Captain, Top Starfleet Operative, Riker, Second in Command. Lieutenants, Highest Efficiency Factor, Data, Troy, LaForge, Worf, Beverly Crusher, Chief Medical Officer, Wesley Crusher, Acting Ensign. For additional transcom, consult Star Trek, The Next Generation. Now, every weekday afternoon at 4. The year 1940, the place San Francisco, the crime murder, the detective cheap. Should I keep the change? No, oh, I'll keep the change. He knows every cheap dame, every cheap joint, and every cheap shot. In this case, it's not only who done it, but who's in it. Tom DeLuise, Anne Margaret, Marsha Mason, and Peter Falk as the cheap detective. Saturday night at 11.30 on Channel 6. We do want to thank Barbara and Ken in the studio for taking up the slack caused by our technical problems, and we thank you for having us in for this special report. We do hope that you've learned something about the Queen and her royal visit here to Miami. We leave you now with one more look at Her Majesty in Miami. Good night. Good night.
Brooklyn was young once, Tokyo was young once, New York was young once, Berlin was young once, Miami was young once, still young now.